Welcome. Welcome to this um, OpenShift Commons briefing. As we do on Wednesdays, we talk to folks who have built certified operators. Um, and um, Sysdig has been one of the very early adopters of the operator um, uh, framework and the operator pattern um, for using their, uh, their tooling on OpenShift and Kubernetes in general. And we are thrilled today to have um, one of our favorite folks, um, Dan, otherwise known as Pop, um, Pop Andrea. Um, and we're going to do something a little different. Um, we're going to have Dan, who is well known for doing great interviews and his own Pop cast, um, interview Loris Diajani. Um, and we'll figure out um, just where everything is going with Sysdig and Falco and talk a little bit about securing and observing Kubernetes and where the future is taking us with Sysdig. So Pop, take it away and um, let's let's do some more in deeper introductions than, than that. Don't adjust that dial. You're not looking at a podcast right now. We're on OpenShift Live. So uh, I have my my dear friend, um, the founder uh, here. And so, uh, Loris, do you want to give it, give an intro here before we get going? Uh, sure. Uh, my name is uh, Loris. I'm the founder and CTO of Sysdig. Sysdig is uh, the secure DevOps company, and we offer uh, visibility and security products. We were born uh, as an open source company and uh, we uh, apply deep visibility to uh, offer essentially security products and visibility products for Kubernetes, cloud native and, and, and containers. And taking off the podcast hat and putting on, I'm the field CTO at Sysdig, and um, I work with uh, Loris and strategic accounts and strategic partners like Red Hat to Bring your dreams uh, when it comes to observability and security and visibility in, in your tools to, to fruition. I was employee 20, I think, of Sysdig, and I remember that um, interview like it was yesterday. It was you know I interviewed with Loris, and it was really a great time. But um, I think we should kick it off, Loris, in terms of. Uh, I'm sorry, did you want to say something? No, I was just saying it feels like we've been working together forever. So I don't know about employee 20, but definitely we, we, we we've been partners partners for quite a bit at this point. Eh? Inch by inch, we'll get to that in a little bit too. So um, I want you to tell me about Sysdig. I mean, just tell me about when, how, it's, how we started, like, you know, what is Sysdig and tell me how we started? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, Sysdig started uh, in at around uh, 2014. It's uh, my second company. My first company was called uh, Ace Technologies and was the uh, commercial entity behind an open source network analyzer called Warsha. Uh, if you've, uh, people in the audience have done networking uh, and packet capture, they might have heard uh, about Warsha, it's a very popular project that uh, uh, I started contributing to when I was uh, very, very, very early on when I was uh, a student at a university uh, in Italy. So I've done essentially open source uh, since uh, 1999, uh, when open source was still something weird, you know, very different from today. Uh, and uh, uh, the first company uh, was acquired, I started in, in, in 2005, it was acquired in 2010 by a bigger company called uh, Riverbed. And uh, at the time we were doing, we had a pretty sophisticated product uh, suite for visibility uh, and performance management uh, of applications based on network packets, which uh, is what I've done uh, my, my whole career uh, before, uh, which was great, but clearly the world was changing. You know? The world was moving uh, toward cloud. AWS was starting becoming popular. A little company called uh, Dot .cloud was renamed into Docker and uh, the old revolution, you know, of which we are part today was uh, really at the, at the very beginning. And it was clear that uh, this was one of those uh, major shifts 
uh, in uh, uh, in IT. And uh, this dig essentially uh, started with the idea of applying the same uh, visibility, the same richness data, the same context that you could get with packets in the previous generation, and you couldn't anymore because uh, you cannot use the spam port of the router when you are renting instances from AWS. You cannot uh, capture packets when you have, uh, you know, like 500 containers uh, running on on a single machine, and uh, there's, uh, you know, no 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 place uh, on the on, on the network to get what what these containers are doing. So, from one point of view, packets are rich in information, uh, very versatile, and allow you to like in a very horizontal way you just sit somewhere on the network and, and you see everything i used to say packets never lie you know but uh, how do you do that in a world of containers orchestration kubernetes OpenShift, uh and, uh, and in a general way you know modern cloud-based applications and uh, essentially we started the company with uh, with that in mind if, if essentially the question was if you could start with a blank sheet of paper and really create the solution that is perfectly tailored uh, to uh, the new world of, uh, of containers and, and orchestrated containers, what would you create? How would you approach this from the technical point of view? And, uh, and that's how our original uh, technology based on capturing system calls with containers and Kubernetes context Actually, even before Kubernetes, so orchestrator context was was born, and uh, and now you know uh, in 2020 I'm here <laughs> doing this interview and talking to you, Pop, and uh, quite 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 a bit has changed and, and quite a bit has grown, both in the e ecosystem and uh, and at Sysdig. Awesome, and, and and again from this basis, I think let's talk about like what is Sysdig now in terms of like you know specific use cases that. Um, you know, I, I could talk about a couple if you'd like, because, you know, you, you and I have worked on some of these use cases with, you know, the product teams and also like the implementing teams and all of that. But there's a couple that come to mind uh, that you can say, like you use specific use cases around Cystic. Yeah, um, absolutely. And uh, by the way, yes, feel free uh, then to interject here yeah, because uh, you spend a lot of time essentially talking to, you know, end users. I, I, I learned under your wings, my man. So like I've been with you in those things. So like anyway. But uh, typically, I like to when when I describe what uh, Sysdig does, uh, I like to use three words: build, run, respond. This is uh, essentially uh, I, I like to 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 describe it that way because uh, it's like uh, in life cycle of modern applications is probably one of the things that is changing the most, you know, compared to what we were doing before with uh, monolithic applications running on uh, uh, physical hardware or virtual machines and releases that were happening, you know, every six months or every year or something like that. Now we essentially all develop applications uh, through a pipeline, right, using CI, CD and, uh, and following typically, you know, like opinionated uh, uh, flows that go from, uh, you know, your, the code in your laptop, a Git repository, typically building container images that go into some, some uh, uh, image registry. And then uh, these images uh, go and are picked by an orchestrator and uh, uh, implement applications that run in production. And uh, uh, there are steps and gates and, uh, and, and process, processes here that uh, are different, you know, for every organization and for every team, but also have uh, stuff in common. Uh, at the build uh, uh, stage, it's important to make sure that uh, we shift left as much as possible, that uh, our code, our containers, our components are validated uh, for functionality and especially for security, for they move forward in the pipeline and they go they go to the next stages uh, of uh, of the of, of the pipeline and here for example container image scanning validation configuration checking are all things 
that are very important and then SysDig does. Then typically our images are run, you know, they can be run into a development environment, they can be run into a test environment, they can be run into a production environment. Typically these environments have different profiles and different properties, but uh, uh, they share the need of uh, you and your team being able to, first of all, understand what's happening. So uh, insights and visibility is really the key um, uh, here. Uh, and then uh, protection, especially if the containers are run uh, in, uh, in production environment. And uh, runtime protection is something that we are seeing becoming more and more important. And uh, SysDig is focused here strongly, uh, not only from the commercial point of view, view, but from the open source point of view, through our tool uh, that we, that now is part of the CNCF in incubation stage, Falco. And Falco is really, we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about uh, that later maybe, but it's really like a, the de facto uh, solution for runtime security and runtime protection for containers. And then, uh, go ahead then. No, I was just going to say, I mean, in terms of, you know, going back to the build run respond, I mean, if you look at this from, you know, the image scanning as a step one, right? And you, you know, bring in these apps in production, you really need to, and I, I was on OpenShift Live with Chris Short before, and, and, and we want, ran through that whole process, right? This whole, you know, from build all the way to, you know, to, to, to the run and for, you know, from a forensics perspective, and then this post-mortem capability, right? So even from like container, like, forensic use cases and again i you know i mentioned this very large investment back then you and i spent a lot of our time together you know uh, initially trying to like prove out the value of cystic there was you know this use case where you know they wanted to have you know visibility but then also have you know to build like uh, new rule sets without having to involve the vendor right you know so things like building miter attack framework so those use cases is super super you know high in terms of somebody touching a directory understanding what they did in this you know you talked about this you know uh, syscalls don't lie, right? Being in a container and be able to have this, and they're not black boxes anymore. You now have the ability to say, this thing happened. No other tool in the market can do that. I'll, I'll, I'll put us up against anybody out there, no matter what. Yeah, and uh, uh, you were saying uh, syscalls never lie. Uh, actually, I said I said originally, packets never lie, but you're right. Syscalls never lie, and they lie even less because they're closer to the application, right? So. Let's talk for for a second uh, uh, about what we mean by syscalls. A system call is uh, every time you are running uh, an application, a process, a container on uh, a Linux box, uh, but not only Linux, any operating system, these applications need to do something other than just computing, right? They need to talk to the external world, they need to establish commun communications, they need to read uh, and do input output from files. So there's a bunch of stuff that is, uh, that is going on. And typically this requires the intervention of the kernel of the operating system, because reading a file essentially for an application involves telling the kernel, okay, give, open this file and give me the content of this file. All of this is system calls. So essentially the core technology uh, behind SysDig involves taking uh, these uh, system calls, finding clever ways to capture them in a way that is, from one point of view, super granular, but also a very horizontal. So you don't have to worry about instrumenting every single container, linking libraries to your application and stuff like that. But you just essentially, through uh, a number of different ways, tell essentially the operating system, okay, I would like to get all of this data in a very efficient way, give it to me. And then you're able to understand essentially all everything that uh, any single application does in terms of data and uh, you know what data is 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 accessed and what is read and what is written in terms of network communications in, ter in terms of uh, users what they what they're doing because every time a user ex executes a command changes a configuration logs in somewhere this generates system calls that are like the footprints you know uh, and and by looking at these footprints we're able to rec reconstruct uh, everything so packets never lie System calls never lie. Which is a natural segue into, okay, we talked about Falco a little bit, right? And I want to talk more about like what it is, what it does, the use cases. Again, that's our open source. I want you to talk to us about what is Falco. Yeah. Um, I uh, already said multiple times that uh, um, uh, 
what we do at CZ was inspired by our previous uh, life in um, with uh, Beckett, right? And, and this is true for Falco as well. As I was saying, Falco is the de facto tool for uh, runtime security in Kubernetes. And uh, uh, Falco uh, is able to sit on a host, get this granular system call insights into every single process and therefore every single container running on the on the toast and uh, takes uh, all of this stream of system calls that can be you know hundreds of thousands sometimes millions per second and puts a rule engine on top of that so that uh, you can essentially be notified uh, based on uh, conditions or anomalies that happen on this stream of system calls Said like that, it's a little bit, uh, you know, like harsh and technical. Uh, right. So, I mean, if we boil it down to like what it does and what does it address, that's the big thing because it does. And, like, and again, it's so hard. It's so hard because this thing does so many amazing things. But let's just boil it down to like, what are the pain points in, of what it does? Like, what, you know, yeah. what, what are the pain points and what does it address? Right. Yeah. So with Falco, you're you're able to be notified at runtime as stuff happens of uh, uh, a a arbitrary uh, uh, number of anomalies that happen on your Kubernetes cluster. Let me give you examples. I don't know, somebody has uh, gained, you know, access to one of your containers and is executing something. Data is uh, stolen and exfiltrated from your infrastructure. Um, people are changing your configuration to do something with your cluster. Uh, somebody has just started, you know, a set of big Bitcoin miners uh, in your infrastructure. These are examples of stuff that uh, Falco can detect. Of course, you know, uh, it's uh, uh, much bigger than that. We have a rule set with hundreds of rules now that are essentially driven by the community. But this gives you a flavor. Essentially, Falco is like, very often, I compare Falco to uh, the security camera for your Kubernetes cluster, right? It's very important uh, uh, when, you, when you have, uh, you know, a, a house, a piece of property that you, that you care about to have locks at the door. Uh, and, uh, you know, in Kubernetes, you, 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 you can implement locks in different ways through admission controllers, uh, through network policies, through all of this kind of, uh, kind of stuff that essentially allows you to, to like, I don't know, block some, somebody from entering, right? The admission controller, prevents an image from entering your cluster. And that's, you know, like, like the lock on your door. But once, but you still want, even if you have good locks, a security camera that allows you to understand if somebody snuck in, maybe from the window, you know, maybe from the chimney, <laughs> hopefully it's Santa, you know. Uh, but uh, 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 at, at the same time, you need to understand if something managed to get in, in a way that maybe you don't expect. and if uh, somebody got in, you need to understand essentially what they did. And that's what Falco does. You deploy Falco through like a demo set uh, or through a, through a Helm chart. It goes to any configuration, start, you start getting data and Falco starting telling you, hey, somebody, somebody got in and this is what they did and this is where you need to take a look. You know, so that's Falco in, 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 in a nutshell. And, and you know what I love about it? The Falco rule set is a good basis, right? But there's events and there's rule sets and there's outputs that you can do, right? You can output as gRPC. You can do it as JSON output, as HTTP. I mean, that's the beauty of it. And again, because it's, it's an open source project, if there's something you want to contribute to, which again, everybody out there, go to falco.org. We have a Slack as well. Contribute to Falco. There's a lot of cool stuff that we're doing with, you know, people in the community. I mean, just the other day, we're working, one of our people, Lorenzo, was working with Alex Ellis to help do like ARM64 support, which is crazy, you know, like for Falco, it's, you know, the playing around with this stuff is just getting involvement from a community makes our product better. Very much the same as our our, our lovely uh, host here today from Red Hat. I mean, that's, you know, how the, the whole op open source ecosystem starts is, you know, people contributing to the things that they're passionate about. Yeah. So, um, I'm sorry to cut you off there, yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. And, um, um, uh, yeah, uh, from uh, I, I believe that a tool like Falco 
uh, really fits well the, dy the dynamic of having a community. Because if you look at what Falco does, and by the way, we're talking about packets. When started Falco, I was inspired, I don't know, for, for the older people in the audience by tools like uh, Snort or, or Suricata or Bro. So intrusion detection systems, uh, you know, for, for, for network packets. And, uh, uh, I, you know, I've been in the in, in the space for long enough to witness essentially how well the model the model of having a powerful, efficient rule engine uh, fit with with the community. Because once you have an engine that is flexible, that we maintain essentially as a, as a core maintainer team that can be deployed easily and that you can trust in terms of performance and, and flexibility and integrations with the with the rest of the ecosystem, then any member of the community is free to customize it for themselves and the specific needs because it's essentially it's a rule engine. From this point of view, we can compare it a little bit to OPA, right? Uh, which uh, is a generic, uh, essentially policy engine, and then you can customize it uh, uh, for for your needs. But uh, this custom customization uh, nature uh, also. Um, generates contributions from the community, which means that you will be guaranteed that your security camera always has the best detections because you have a whole community of people that build detections for themselves by customizing it, but then contribute, you know, some, some of these back to the community. And uh, there can be a relatively little core team of developers that focus about making this super, super efficient. For example, recently I've been uh, involved personally. It's, it's, it's always been a passion of mine on the, uh, rule engine, you know, and try to find optimizations for the rule engine. But at the same time, while I do that and I go very deep, a user can really come and be part of the community and contribute just by, you know, creating a rule for uh, like a, a specific PCI compliance check, you know, and and that will become a benefit for the rest of the community. And then check after check after check. Falco becomes, you know, like a, a, an extremely power, powerful tool for for PCI compliance that everybody can use, and then for MITRE, and then and then for other, you know, com compliance standards. So uh, as we go ahead, sorry. I, I, I mean, my, my belief is it's the facto kind of uh, tool for runtime security on Kubernetes, OpenShift, and just in, in general. That's 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 you know, I I, I believe it, and. Um, you know, I think we got some questions from the, uh, Diane, is that what you're coming on to remind me about the questions yeah, there? Yeah, I, I was, yeah, I'm not so g sure how my <laughs> bandwidth is, so um, tell me if I'm breaking no up. But, um, no worries. But actually, one, one of the things that I'm, I'm curious about, too, is and, and the thing that Sysdig and Falco save us all who are deploying containers and applications and services on Kubernetes and other places, um, is is working with the compliance officers and because historically that's where you have to build the trust um, in, in order to be allowed to deploy your your applications and your services and so I think one of the things that Sysdig has done for us in the community is giving us um, a way to um, build that trust with the IT audit and the compliance officers and if that that has been the re besides the fact that you're doing all this wonderful stuff in the open source world that if if you didn't cover our uh, behind um, for that aspect of um, uh, deploying applications we would be have to be doing it ourselves um, and and that's a real heavy lift um, to do without something like Sysdig so that's I think one of the huge value propositions for your corner of the market and that you've done us a huge service. Um, and so that, that for me, uh, I love the packets never lie uh, and the syscalls never lie. Um, I'm not sure we can prove that, but maybe you guys could. So um, that, that's it. So maybe a little bit about, um, because I know the conversation with compliance auditors and, and folks like that, how you um, help people have those conversations to trust the tooling. I think that building that trust inside of an organization, um, I know because I'm old, I can remember having to go through log files line by line with auditors like, yes, my database is really, you know, doing this and those transactions really are logged. But maybe if you could talk about your experience sure. um, helping people do that um, and having those conversations. L Laura, you want to take the first part of it and I can take the second part? Is that okay? Yes, um, I 
um, would uh, uh, start by saying, um, uh, I absolutely agree. And one of the things, again, I've been part of uh, uh, this uh, industry essentially, uh, you know, uh, for, for, from the beginning, you know, I've, uh, I've I was there when Kubernetes did, uh, you know, uh, release number one. I've been following uh, definitely the evolution of, uh, of OpenShift since pretty much the very, very beginning. And uh, uh, what you're saying is, is, is uh, clearly uh, insightful because uh, more and more um, things like compliance or forensics we, uh, is another one become become more important when, when talking to people both in the community and uh, and in the industry and this is clearly in my opinion one of the best in, in indicators of the fact that our ecosystem is maturing right when uh, we were at the beginning like 2014 2015 people were mostly worried worried about container image scanning which is the first check that you need to fill even if you are not really going into, into production you know and then you really need to to start running, you know, because maybe you're doing experiments, you're doing uh, uh, just uh, uh, applications that are not critical. And then as your your application scale become more critical, have more developers, have more users, then you start, okay, you know, runtime becomes important. Compliance becomes really important. You know, I, if, if I need to replace my legacy infrastructure with one that is based on containers and OpenShift, uh, I need to make sure that I have the same compliance checks, you know, and this kind of stuff that maybe is not as sexy as, uh, I don't know, the, working with the latest and greatest features in Kubernetes becomes really, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a critical thing. So I see these uh, 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 increasing interest in compliance and as a consequence, the growth of, uh, of, of a company like Sysdig is a very uh, exciting indicator of the maturity of the Kubernetes, Kubernetes uh, uh, market. And, and Diane brings up a great point. And, and again, it's like there. I think right now, as we're seeing this, and you know, you know, Red Hat's seen this as well. It's 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 a cultural shift, without a shadow of a doubt, right? The security teams were here, and the network teams were here, and then the DevOps teams were here, right? And so amalgamating the, the two teams, what do you need? Do you need to embed this security? So if a developer is like, well, why are they, you know, scrutinizing my builds and all? Well, it's because we have a common set of compliance rules that we're going, or, you know, from a build perspective or from a runtime perspective it might be, hey, the reason why we have to do this is your applications need to be compliant when they're pushed into um, an, an environment from a runtime perspective. And so from our, it's kind of our, our take on it is that, you know, you're, we're actually helping to unite those two teams because we're saying this is a common set that you, you're going to see. And here's a you know base to see they're from MITRE or some PCI compliance and tags from that perspective. And that, that, that's you know part of our enterprise tool as well is having this workflow that kind of provides that you know stream seamless kind of view that the developer can see vulnerabilities or like at runtime perspective they can see it, but it's all dictated from the same. They're all speaking from the same script, so to speak. If that makes sense, Diane. Because the pipeline. Oh, sorry, go ahead. That definitely, yeah, that definitely makes sense. And I, and I think the, the interesting thing for me is I probably first came to Sysdig and other tools to debug my applications more than compliance. I mean, I think the first, when developers first approach Sysdig or admins or network people come in, they're using because they need the tools to figure out the stuff and the maturing of the audience for whom these reports and tooling and the trust issues have to be built out um, shows shows just sort of the next level of um, the Kubernetes ecosystem. It, it's incident response. And again, if you think about it, if you extrapolate that term even to from a trouble, troubleshooting perspective, right? You talk about this DevOps function, somebody's trying to tr debug why their pod crashed. I could tell you right now, the number one blog we have out there is how pod crashing. And we have a blog we wrote, how to troubleshoot that with Cystic. Now think about now taking that from a runtime perspective and figuring out Somebody terminaled into your container and wrote to the Etsy directory that's hitting all types of compliance on your production level. I want to know that's a PCI compliance um, bench. That's something that's necessary or the underlying host itself is in compliance. Now, again, if you're using OpenShift, they're going to plug for OpenShift. You're already hardened. So you already have some of that indemnity, right? So it's, uh, you know, I'm not getting paid. Diane's not sending me and Laura's a check for this. I, I, I got no budget. I'm, I'm on the open source side. <laughs> I got no budget. Yeah. So. <laughs> 
Um, do you want us to go into the next question or because I see one about uh, cloud scale Prometheus monitoring as well? Yeah, that I'd be curious about to hear more about that too. Yes, myself. So Lars, you want me to get the first that. half uh, and then you get the second half? So it's up to you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Paper to uh, uh, Sure. Uh, what, what, is the question uh, just general overview of what we do or? Uh, why don't you start with that? Because I don't think a lot of people are aware of this offering. Um, or yeah. A um, little overview would help really nicely. Yeah. Um, it's uh, one of the other uh, tools and ecosystems that has taken um, the uh, IT world by storm is the uh, converging of visibility uh and and monitoring into finally after you know decades uh an open standard an open protocol an open way to export and collect metrics uh and uh, uh, a, a way that can be you know embedded similarly to falco inside inside the platforms and inside kubernetes uh, easily and uh, and this is prometheus right prometheus uh, is uh, is great and uh, the most important thing about Prometheus is that it gives you, it gives us essentially common language uh, around which we can we can uh, have conversations uh, about metrics. This common language is uh, definitely the Prometheus protocol to to in, in the format for the Prometheus exporters, but also PromQL, the the query language that is at the base of uh, of what Prometheus does. And then, you know, like uh, Grafana is a way to, to visualize this metric. Sysdig uh, uh, comes from uh, a strong background in uh, monitoring and visibility. And uh, uh, the way we, what we want to bring to the market in terms of, of Prometheus is um, the, uh, from one point of view, decreasing the barriers. So making, it, making Prometheus easier to consume. And uh, we have uh, a commercial offering that uh, includes uh, essentially a bunch of uh, exporters and dashboards that are curated and opinionated by by Sysdig and that can be used essentially in a in a in an easy and, and natural way. The other one is uh, the scale. We built essentially an engine, a SaaS engine that is uh, more or less infinitely scalable uh, in terms of Prometheus that you can uh, trust in terms of stability and in, in terms of, uh, you know, throwing at it the data of even, you know, uh, sophisticated or, or big infrastructures, but that uh, uh, at the same time, differently from uh, most of the other, you know, commercial monitoring solutions is fully 100% compatible and host swappable with the Prometheus that, uh, that you're using today, you know, so if you're just using a single Prometheus server, or if you're using Thanos, Thanos and Cortex, you can host swap and, uh, and use Sysdig in a very natural way. And the other thing is we offer something that, especially for enterprises that maybe have a bigger size, has all of the integrations, ability to support, for example, teams of developers with segmented data, ability to uh, integrate with RBAC and, uh, and, and all this kind of stuff that a bigger organization with many developers and many users needs for Prometheus. So our philosophy is always, we support open source uh, and uh, we uh, try to, uh, you know, make it possible for people to uh, really, truly uh, adopt standards and base their, uh, their infrastructure on true standards. But when uh, it's time essentially to bring it to the next level in terms of security, in terms of visibility, in terms of troubleshooting, you can Trust is deep to be your partner, uh, and uh, uh, you can have a partner that essentially has work work with the big, biggest company companies in the world, and there's essentially a be better tested uh, solution that is fully compatible and fully host workable with your open source solution. Uh, nailed it as usual, Loris. But I think I had one point to this: is um, also we have a curated kind of hub. It's called. Uh, I, mean, I just think I'll also base this as well as OpenShift out of the box is you know amazing in Prometheus integrations. And so what we're doing is adding you know, again, as Sysdig does, right, is adding even more layers to that for you to be able to like get even deeper dissemination, do that troubleshooting, like Laura said, have that RBAC functionality, 
but also we have a curated list of exporters that you can have Helm charts to be able to deploy in your environment, something called promcat.io. To type that in chat, promcat.io. And uh, basically what that's going to allow you to do is you have Helm charts to deploy new things that are out there. Because right now, what do you do? You go out there and you find an exporter and you cross your fingers that it's not going to bring your whole cluster down because it might be something like a node exporter that somebody might have, you know, really not put the testing in. You know, we tested this, you know, uh, some integrations with like, let's just say Nginx or, you know, CloudWatch metrics, whatever. I mean, we've worked with like these various teams to be able to have that going. So that's another kind of key advantage we have is this kind of curated, you know, uh, integration along with all the amazing stuff we do to, to make it cloud scale from a backend perspective. So, so I'm sorry, Dan, is there, you, is there something else you want to say? Promcat.io is, is new to me, so thank you, thank you for that. I hadn't seen that one before, so that's awesome. Um, I see what we did, Chad. He also mentioned Security Hub. That again, great stuff there. That's um, you know something that. So our all our Falco rules is basically, you know, I'm sorry to, to take it over, but that's basically where something you know you can have like best practice configurations of Falco rules that you may not know about. Stuff like you know securing etcd or securing you know your instances that are running in, in GKE or, you know, those types of things or fluent D rules. I mean, you know, those things are happening right out of the box. Thank you so much, Waleed. It's good to see you, but yeah. yeah. So I, I think that the, the wonder, the beauty of the open source community and Waleed and everybody else is sort of uh, showcasing that is, is the willingness to share the recipes and cookbooks and um, templates for doing these things. And I think that's, that's, and, and with with the different approaches with Prometheus and Falco and other things and Helm and operators, this is really one of the things that um, is, I think, helping with the adoption of um, Kubernetes and securing it um, and, and making sure that it matures in, in a way that um, we can all um, take advantage and build our innovations and do our workloads on it. So I'm this is something we learned we learned from our friends at Red Hat. I mean, with you know Ansible Galaxy and and in the things you all are doing with operators. I mean, again, we you know you are the you know in terms of our relationship, we understand like you know what what you all bring to the table, and we we want to help you know benefit you as well. So that's what we do. Yeah, well, and and I didn't pay him to say that, so um, it's 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 it, 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 it is the open source model, and and I think you know Red Hat drinks the Kool Aid, um, and and Loris, I, you've obviously been drinking the Kool Aid. Oh, he's gonna put on his Red Hat jacket. I got. My it's it's getting a little cold in here, Diane. It's getting a little cold. Oh uh, man, we're gonna have to swag you out again soon here. Yeah. Isn't that the one thing that's missing from all these virtual events? Is that um, there is no swag anymore. I don't know what I'm gonna do for stocking stuffers at Christmas time. Uh, I, yeah. So I, anyways, yeah, I'm starting um, getting long t-shirts, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm getting some knitted OKD hats into the cool store school cool stuff store at Red Hat. Hopefully in time for Christmas. So we'll send you some for being on the show. Um, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about your roadmap, what you see coming down the pike um, for Sysdig or the offerings you have or even in the evolution of Kubernetes itself, um, what you're, what you guys are thinking about? Yes, Walid, I know the OKD T-shirt did not appear on your doorstep as it should have. We we had some customs issues. So, anyways, moving on from swag to roadmaps. So, um, yeah, I can I can take this one in a general way. Sysdig uh, is uh, a company is uh, betting uh, on the fact that uh, um, there's really, you know, at this point, there's no question uh, that uh, uh, a new stack is formed. And the new stack is going to be based on Kubernetes. And uh, the new stack is going to be powerful, cloud native, and open, and open source and community driven by nature. So. Uh, we see uh, essentially, we were talking just now, you know, about the open source and the community approach. Not only we believe that this approach is going to be uh, rich and powerful, uh, but we also think that uh, no vendor of success will be able to escape this dynamic in the future. Uh, what I mean is, for example, in security, which is uh, 
uh, an area, uh, as we discussed, where the SysDig is really focusing uh, a lot of energy. Uh, the legacy approach of uh, having um, solutions that are built in a proprietary way and uh, and brought to the market in a proprietary way just don't, not going to happen anymore you know kubernetes is designed as an open ecosystem as a, a system based on standards on api uh, on on community collaboration and uh, that will have to be uh, the case uh, uh, everywhere so um from the open source point of view uh the way we see Falco progressing is really like uh, we are, I, I was mentioning before as we're designing Falco as uh, a very, very powerful engine that is essentially pluggable. Our goal is it should be uh, easy uh, for anybody, essentially, ideally one liner to not only deploy Falco on Kubernetes, but also create the proper uh, pipeline of uh, collection and processing of the data to make uh, a Falco essentially uh, insightful for you. And not, not only, uh, like when you have the security camera, it's only good <laughs> if, if you can do something, you know, with the data. If you, if you, if you are ne never able to look at it, uh, it, it will be useful. So modularity, efficiency, and the ability to embed uh, the, the, the tool wherever, wherever it's possible. From the commercial point of view, very similar philosophy. So we see uh, SysDig, SysDig Secure, and SysDig Monitor really evolve in a way that is as close as possible to Kubernetes, taking advantage whenever possible of the richness and power of Kubernetes. One other, one way that I like to put this uh, is uh, um, better included, right? So don't go and, uh, you know, uh, implement some way of blocking like uh, uh, images from going into production when Kubernetes offers the admission controller, you know? Don't uh, try to do whatever, you know? Uh, like uh, 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 protection of containers when uh, in, in custom ways, maybe using weird stuff like LD preload and so on, when Kubernetes gives you, I don't know, pod security policies uh, or second profiles, you know, or, or stuff like that. So try to create a tool that uh, brings really critical, important functionality like compliance, which we're always working to enhance, like uh, runtime security, like forensics, which, which we didn't really touch uh, very deeply now, but it's very important because uh, OpenShift Kubernetes orche orchestrates stuff away, right? So by the time you get a red light from one of your tools uh, and you know that you've been attacked, very likely your container is gone, you know? So what do you do? So all of this kind of stuff needs to be uh, really uh, offered to the users because it's so, so so important and so critical, but needs to be done in a way that is Kubernetes centric and, and battery in, included centric, centric. So from the roadmap point of view, if you follow essentially the roadmap of, of Kubernetes and what's happening with net, network mesh, what's happening, you know, with uh, uh, the things that have been added to the platform, what's happening with, uh, you know, like the, the enrichments that, uh, that uh, uh, tools uh, like uh, like uh, OpenShift bring on top of Kubernetes. They just want wants to play with that, integrate, and essentially at any stage stage of the pipeline, being able to offer uh, security, protection, compliance, monitoring, troubleshooting, incident uh, response. I think you know we'll add really quick, and then we we should probably you know wrap it up, Diane. I think we're close to the time, but you know in terms of just having a workflow from a security perspective, and you know this isn't also for the larger enterprises. It's also like having security for, as a SaaS based uh, um, deployment as well. That's not not something that other vendors can do, and we can, right? So we have this like you know essentials functionality, which are the five top five things you would need to be able to. Um, you know, secure your environments that maybe, look, securing, you know, I'm doing a KubeCon talk, KubeCon talk talking about how Kubernetes by itself is not secure. There's things that you need to do to secure your pipelines, to secure your runtime capabilities, and Zora said the forensics capabilities. So what we're going to do is new event streams, new work, uh, easier workflows for you to be able to do that. And also for the enterprises or the, you know, the SMBs or the, you know, mid-sized companies that just want to be able to like not worry this, worry about their applications as they should, we can help you from a security perspective and have this running in SaaS. The huge, you know, huge kind of advantage of Cystic. 
And another thing that uh, the last one that I want to mention in terms of where, where we're going as an open source community for Falco and as a company, the other one is uh, running Kubernetes is becoming uh, a standard, you know, everywhere in the data center, at the edge, in the cloud. Uh, and uh, uh, Falco is an open source tool and SysDig as a company is really focusing a lot on helping our users and protecting applications uh, everywhere. Uh, just now, you know, uh, I was in a call with the Falco community and we were uh, discussing ARM support, you know, uh, in terms of being able to, to protect the edge, you know, because the edge is and will be running Kubernetes. And oh, the cat's running... out of the bag now, Loris. We're going to have to have a lot of PRs on ARM now. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. You just made my day. There you go. <laughs> Working on that, but uh, but th that's an interesting one, you know, or 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 the cloud, you know, being able to to run, you know, Falcon SysDig on environments like uh, I don't know Fargate or 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 or, or wherever, you know, uh, you 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 want to run containers uh, uh, everywhere. So um, uh, Kubernetes is is uh, uh, going everywhere. As a consequence, SysDig needs to go everywhere. I think that's that's actually um, a, probably a great pl what place to sort of wrap this up um, and maybe where um, if you want Dan to, to share the uh, the resources slide that you had there so that people know how to get a hold of you all and yep. and um, where to find more of this stuff and and you mentioned Dan you have a talk at KubeCon North America um, I do yeah so I'm I'm, I'm speaking so yeah that, I'm speaking that's with awesome. um, yeah, speaking at um, with actually uh, Booz Allen, we're going to talk about pretty much like, you know, the inherent aspects of Kubernetes that aren't out of the box secure. So being able to do that, I have a flashing on the screen as well, kind of, you know, we have upcoming things. I mean, if you go to Sysdig right now and in terms of our partner Red Hat site, I mean, we have, I mean, we're well known for the blogs that we write I mean, in terms of releases and everything like that to so take a look at that. Um, Security on Red Hat OpenShift. We actually wrote that with Red Hat on securing uh, OpenShift. It's a very, you know, well well placed doc, and we appreciate, you know, the uh, the, the uh, working together with uh, Red Hat on that. Um, again, uh, there, uh, Loris, do you want to handle the uh, talking about you know, joining the community and that type of thing? Yes, join the community. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Loris is there. Is that, that's all you need. That's all you need. You 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 yeah. see the, you see the you see the link uh, the links uh, on this page. Again, Falco, uh, so first of all, we would love to see you as an open source user of Falco. Runtime security is really become, becoming more and more important for Kubernetes. And if you do runtime security uh, for Kubernetes, then, uh, and if you care about it, then you need to, to come and, and, and take a look at Falco. Uh, we uh, are there to help you. Uh, we uh, are a CNCF project. We have uh, our GitHub page, we have our weekly calls. So just go go to the links on this document. Come, say hi. Uh, we'll be happy to, to, to chat with you. And uh, we'll be happy to see you uh, use Falco uh, as, as a tool. One, one last shameless plug, Diane, if I may. And again, these Bright Talk webinars we do, I've, I've done a couple with some of the Red Hat folks, some of the other people in the ecosystem, but this this one's very, very cool because it's literally, you know, everybody can he hear the vendors talk about stuff, but having an actual, you know, three enterprises talk about how they, you know, solved Kubernetes with anecdotal things with OpenShift and Cystic, and, you know, and, and is, is huge. So having anecdotal pieces where it's real, it's real where people are using these technologies in real time, Check this out on November 10th. We have a bright talk. We'd love to see you all there. Awesome. Because I, I, I'm saying that 2021 is the year of the end users um, sharing their best practices and lessons learned. And, and uh, events like that and like the OpenShift Commons events, really the people we, we love to hear. We love to hear the updates from folks like yourselves on Falco and Sysdig and stuff. But I think um, the value proposition for um, Hearing from end users is is so much more real, um, and that's where we really learn some of the best um, kept secrets on how to use some of this software and how people are using it and configuring it to make their uh, solve their problems and help uh, secure their system. So, I I really appreciate you guys coming here today. Uh, this is awesome. Um, listen to the podcast. Uh, you know, you should if you're not yet, you should be, um, and we'll we'll definitely. Be, um, 
reach out and get updates as we go forward um, and um, do some more work and and definitely check out um, Dan's talk at um, yeah I know there's a red hat my nice red hat number red one at number KubeCon. one yeah there you go and um, if you're if you're going to KubeCon um, North America you can also add on um, we're having hosting an OpenShift Commons gathering on November 17th day zero of KubeCon and we'll have a number of end users talking as well as updates on um, the latest release 4.6 and so there's going to be um, lots of really good content um, coming out and I, I, hopefully you won't hit virtual burnout but some of these stories are really um, uh, some of the best things I've heard um, so there's going to be some really cool stuff coming at KubeCon so thanks again Loris, Dan Thank you. and um, this Dan, is it's been really a pleasure. Awesome. And I'm looking forward to it and so take care and be safe. Be safe. <laughs> Thank you.